intermediate accounting 16D assets exchange, non-monetary exchange with boot. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, our email and our website. And the book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, will be available March 2013. And we're going to teach a free online course that will be ongoing every month teaching the book. So this is assets exchange, non-monetary exchange with boot, which is sort of uh, an oxymoron because if it's a non-monetary exchange, that implies there's not any cash, and yet boot represents some cash exchange. And I'm going, I put a note up here that fair market value, it has the abbreviation FMV throughout. So here's the concept. If the exchange lacks commercial substance, then the non-monetary exchange is based on the carrying amount of the asset that you gave up. So if I'm exchanging my car with a carrying value of $3,000 and getting your car, my basis in the new car, my carrying amount, is the asset value that was given up, the carrying amount of the value that was given up. So in my example, that's $3,000. So let's define commercial substance, since we just mentioned the exchange in this example lacks commercial substance. What does commercial substance mean? If one asset generates more cash flow than the other, that's commercial substance. If not, we're saying that both assets generate the same level of cash flow. So in my example, my car and your car, if they generate the same amount of cash flow, maybe we use them as a delivery car for pizza, a pizza business, the exchange lacks commercial substance. So I'm not gaining or losing anything by exchanging the asset is what commercial substance implies. So now we have this monetary consideration or boot issue here. And there's a dollar threshold for the monetary consideration. It says, if boot's included in the exchange and that boot that's, that's paid is less than 25% of the fair market value of the payer's new asset, new asset, not old asset, then we add the boot, the money we paid, to the carrying amount of the asset we give up, and that's our new asset's carrying amount. So if my the car I gave up was $3,000 and I paid $500 boot. I would add the $500 to the $3,000 carrying value of the car I gave up. So here's an example. I'm going to shrink this down just a bit more. There we go. A and B agree to exchange machine. Here are the carrying amounts and the fair amount but fair market amounts, excuse me, of A and B's machines. There's carrying amount A and B. There's fair market value A and B. And in addition to that, B <coughs> pays A 15000 in cash because of the difference in fair market values of the machines. A's machine's fair market value is worth more than B's machine. So B's going to pay 15000 in cash. So... A is not in a, a disadvantage in this exchange, so to speak. And the test question is, how should B record the receipt of the new machine they get from A? How should B record the receipt of the new machine they get from A? And so we have a couple of steps listed. Step one is compute 25% of the fair market value of the payer's new asset because that's what we need to know to determine how we handle the boot. So the fair market value of A's new asset, A's fair market value, $100,000. 25% of that, multiplying it by 25%, is $25,000. Step two is we compare that fair market value, 25% of it, $25,000 in this case, to the boot, and we see that the boot is less than the 25% of the fair market value. And since that's the case, we add the boot to the carrying amount of the asset we gave up. And that will be B's new carrying amount value 
carrying value, book value, if you will, of the, of the new machine. So, 4B is the carrying amount of the asset B gave up 50,000 right here, plus the boot, because it's less than 25% of the fair market value. So B's carrying a value of the new machine is $65,000. So to review, non-commercial, non-monetary exchange with boot, if we assume it lacks commercial substance, which means the two assets generate the same sort of cash flow. <clears throat> you use the carrying amount of the asset given up as your new carrying amount. If there's boot involved, or cash paid. If the cash you pay is less than 25% of the new asset that you get, you add the boot to the carrying amount, that becomes your new carrying amount. And that's what we saw at the bottom of the page right here, step three. That's the end of, <clears throat> excuse me, Intermediate Accounting 6B. We have additional videos and spreadsheets not on YouTube and some combined with YouTube into larger hour, hour to 30 minute videos. My YouTube channel, you know, you can email me for a complete list of videos on YouTube. The email address is also on the website for one-on-one -on -one tutoring and live chat sessions here at the website. And remember that Cost Accounting for Dummies, which comes out in March of 2013, we are teaching live free online courses to teach the textbook uh, every month. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.